just filmed this video and do not disturb because I just filmed this video and it's gone. It's gone. So let's do this again. That's like horrible feeling. Where's the video? Well, anyways, welcome back to the channel. We're doing my November wrap up. I'm excited because this was literally the best reading month I've had this year, maybe in my life. And I feel like it just goes to show and just goes to prove that the theory that I talked about a few videos back is true. And if you want to know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about my theory on how to actually read more books that you like, how to find more five star reads, that whole thing. That's like two videos back. It's basically what I spent the whole year kind of trying to figure out by trial and error, but I finally came up with the theory behind how to get it to work. So anyways, that's just why I feel like this month was so good. And I'm excited for December because I also feel like it's going to be really good. We're going to do a December TBR video soon and an unhaul of some of the books on my bookshelf. We're going to go ahead and get into it. But yeah, I wanted to be festive because I'm like, it's December now officially. It's December 3rd. Cheers. I didn't want to wear this for my December wrap up because I just feel like it'd be after Christmas. So I'm like, I just feel like it's more relevant now. And I've got some fun little winter nails going on. So if I'm talking with my hands a lot, it's because I'm feeling myself, okay? I do have my books right here. Also, the lighting was a little bit better earlier on. So one of my clips about one of the books is all that saved. And, uh, the lighting was different in that. These are my books, and I have a few that I read or I listened to via audiobook. I'm doing a thumbnail. Okay, anyhow, we're gonna get into it. High ratings this month, really had a good month. So we started off with First Truly by Abby Jimenez. This is, I would consider this a romance slash rom-com, although I feel like it did explore heavier topics and I feel like it was not as lighthearted, so I don't know. Would you still classify that as rom-com? I'm not sure. But I gave this book a 3.5, mostly because it was way too heavy on the miscommunication trope, which I am now discovering I'm really not a big fan of that trope. This book follows the female main character, her name is Brianna, and the male main character, his name is Jacob, and they both work at the same hospital. They're both doctors. And Jacob is new to the hospital and him and Brianna get off on the wrong foot. He has really bad social anxiety. So he's like, I need to explain myself. So he explains himself via letter and then they start exchanging letters back and forth. And then they just develop this really cute friendship through it. But Brianna is also going through a really hard time. She's going through a divorce and her brother is going through some difficult health problems. She's just not in the best place in life right now. But I do feel like there almost would be no story without the miscommunication trope, but in some weird way, it does kind of fit for these characters because Jacob has social anxiety and Brianna is dealing with like a traumatic past. And she's also just like healing from some things that she has been through previously. So it's almost like it makes sense in the story. It's just not my favorite thing to read about, I don't think. So there's that. But um, I thought it was really great writing. I really loved the characters. I thought both of the characters were really sweet, really cute. I think there was like a few book icks prevalent. Like, I don't know what it is, but with their banter, I thought their banter was okay, but I find it kind of, I don't know. Let me know if y'all feel the same way down below, but I find it kind of cringeworthy when characters like giggle or laugh a lot and I'm not laughing with them about what they're talking about. So I don't know that's just that's just me but I loved the themes that were discussed like there was a lot of talk about social anxiety and anxiety in relationships anxiety in the workplace just how it is to live with that and get through that but also have somebody be there with like for you through that is really wholesome and really sweet and then with Brianna since she's dealing with some trauma and going through a divorce it talks a lot about like showing up in relationships like showing up fully and healing from your past in order to move into something new with somebody who wants to be there with you. And she's also showing up for him, but she just kind of has to heal a little bit more in certain areas. And for example, maybe he does, but he's also gotten through like a weird thing with a relationship too. So they can relate in a lot of ways as well, I feel like. So really liked this. I gave it a 3.5, like I said. Not my favorite tropes to read about. It is also fake dating trope. So yeah, miscommunication, fake dating, which I don't know that I have an opinion on fake dating tropes, but yeah, so. 3.5 stars, yours truly, not bad. I think I'd probably maybe one day read another book by her for sure. And then we've got Bunny by Mona Awad, which I gave a four stars. 
one whole star goes to the floppiness of this book. I mean, let's get it, y'all. This book was amazing. I thought that the writing was so vivid. Like, it's one of those confusing books where you're like, is this an unreliable narrator? What's actually going on? You're kind of a little bit in the dark for a good bit of the book, I would say. And then towards the end, you sort of start to understand just what's happening, potentially. But I still kind of had to do some reading up on my own afterwards, just because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going crazy. And that really helped kind of solidify my thoughts on the book. I thought this was like so fast paced, so engaging. I would almost describe it as like dark academia mixed with Alice in Wonderland with the like rabbit themes and like animal themes and then also just kind of like the way that the it just how atmospheric it was almost reminded me of Alice in Wonderland which I loved. I love Alice in Wonderland growing up. I thought her writing was really cool. Her writing was like her writing was like smart but also really understandable and not entirely too pretentious like witty descriptive writing so visual but almost like such a fictional universe like it's almost like an alternate universe when somebody can write and put you in an alternate universe where you're like yeah this is definitely real life i'll talk about what it's about in a second but we're definitely on a university campus like but it's almost just like an alternate universe like how cool it's about this girl her name's samantha she goes to warren university in new england and she is She's in a fictional writing cohort and there is a group of girls who call each other bunny in this fictional, write, fictional writing cohort and they're very cult-like and weird like they all talk the same they're all very like chipper and they call each other bunny and they're just kind of strange and Samantha and her friend Ava have like historically kind of made fun of these girls that, that call each other bunny this cult called bunny but Samantha one day gets invited to go to one of their meetings and they're having like a themed night anywho she gets invited and then sort of honestly just gets like wrapped up in this group of girls after that and it's almost like she gets wrapped up in this very strange way you're like almost like okay how did that happen so fast and it almost feels like you would understand how she got wrapped up in it so fast because you as a reader are kind of almost feeling the same sensations as samantha's probably feeling which i just feel like when a writer can do that that's so talented like that's what i was saying about magnolia parks like i'm like if it was jessa hastings intention for me to be so confused as if i were in that toxic relationship with them she succeeded so it's almost the same thing here like the writing almost made me feel what is this what is this that i'm trying to do almost like it's a vision the writing almost felt like you were under the influence a little bit which then that was a question i had about the character i was like is she good like what's going on with her so blows my mind when an author can do that i absolutely salute that great writing really cool story like i said kind of all comes together in the end in a strange way but then you're still just like what was that but like i was so here for it i feel like this book did it for me and i really liked it so highly recommend the next book that i read i gave a 4.5 stars like so many highly rated books this month i gave bear town by frederick backman 4.5 stars this book was just incredible. It follows a town in Sweden that's a very small isolated town, not a lot of visitors, kind of a poor economy and it basically hinges like their economy and the hope that exists in this town hinges on these young high schoolers who play hockey because hockey is the lifeline of this town. Kids continue to win and they continue to get better then the town might get better and might improve too and they might have more people drawn in to come play hockey or to just come visit in general so there's just a lot of hope hinging on these young teens kind of similar to how maybe some small towns would really hinge their hope on like high school football players or something so it's very relatable you don't have to like hockey you don't have to really love sports all that much sports and hockey is just the symbol of like what unites a community in this book in this case the back says like under that heavy burden of like the whole town relying on these kids it says the semi-final match becomes a catalyst for a violent act that will leave the young girl traumatized in a town in turmoil this is a story about a town and a game but even more about loyalty commitment and the responsibilities of friendship the people we disappoint even though we love them and the decisions we make every day that come to define us. In the story of a small forest town, Frederick Bagman has found the whole world and he really did. Like, I feel like every feeling and emotion and topic under the sun was sort of covered in this book some way, somehow. And I don't know how he did that. Like, it was just 
beautiful. The writing was amazing. Listening to an audiobook was amazing. And I honestly devoured a good bit of it on audiobook because I just wanted to get through. I was like, this is so good. I want to know more. And I felt like I lived in this town. Like I felt like I felt everything that they felt. I felt like I knew the characters. I felt like it was so small and so bleak in a lot of ways and needs hope and needs something to care about and keep them going. But at the same time, there's like a horrible event that takes place and you're just like, what are these people gonna do? Why? Like, why does this happen? It's crazy. I felt so many things reading this book. I just feel for all the characters. Like, they're all so well written. Even like the characters that you're like, oh my gosh, you're horrible. They're just so well written. I don't know why I don't hear more people talking about Bear Town. I want to finish this series, I think, in December. I don't think I'll read it in just, uh, no, not in December, in January. Like, read Us Against You and The Winners, like, back to back in January. So it just made me really curious about, like, these small towns that you never hear of. You don't visit. Like, I have a soft spot in my heart for Sweden because I visited and I loved it. I went to Stockholm. I didn't go to a small city. But there's so many places in the world like this that exist. Like across cultures, across countries, like there's so many places in the world that are so small that you'll never hear of, that you'll never visit, and that a lot of people probably won't hear of and visit either, but they exist and you're just like, there's, there's all these stories going on there. It'd be so interesting to just see that and be a part of that or just like have a glimpse into that, something that you'd never see, never even think to see. And that really, this really opened my eyes to that. So props to this book. It was just beautiful the cover is beautiful oh my god the lighting is like <sighs> if i mm. okay well the ring light's working the ring light's not half bad okay we're good we're good the next book that i read was crying in h mart by michelle zauner so this is a memoir by the indie rock musician japanese breakfast and I was familiar with some of her music before going into this memoir, but what really pulled me to want to read this book was the cover and themes that I appreciate as far as like culture, food, where you come from, what makes you you. I just was kind of drawn to that. And I didn't really realize how heavy of a subject matter it actually was. Like, I'm pretty sure I had read the back. I don't usually pick up a book without reading the back. But I guess I didn't realize that it was about her mother's battle with cancer and then her eventual passing and then Michelle's coming of age story relating to that. I ended up giving this book a 3.25 and I honestly think I would like to knock it down just a few notches. I know some people don't like rating memoirs. I personally don't see a problem with it if you are rating based upon what did the author set out to talk about. This is actually from Jack, Jack the Reader? Is that his YouTube name? Jack, like the famous Jack booktuber. He made a video not that long ago about how to sound smarter talking about books. And one of the things he was saying is like, rate your books and a way that you can rate is like, did the author set out to do what they intended to do? And assess that by what is, what is the back, you know, what does the synopsis say? Uh, what are the topics that are going to be explored? And I feel like I, one, I listened to a lot of it on audiobook because I just wasn't really enjoying it in the form that it was written. Obviously, I love books that like talk about food and like the meaning of food and like how that plays into identity and culture. And there was a lot of that, but it, it started to become a little bit too heavy into that where I felt like there could be more page real estate dedicated to her transformation regarding what she went through with her mom. And I felt like there was a little bit of that, but I just genuinely left the book feeling like I didn't really understand the author's like character development. Like I didn't understand how she grew from what she went through or didn't grow. Like I didn't like, did she grow? Did she not like, did she, what what were the emotional repercussions of like what she went through because it's a lot what she went through was so heavy and so hard and difficult but i just didn't feel like i understood by the end of the story like i felt like there was this wall that i couldn't like reach out and understand her and that to me doesn't make for a very hard like a highly rated memoir i felt like it focused on a lot of things it didn't need to focus on rather than the things that I wanted to see you know learning what the book was about i was like okay well i still want to read this but 
in regards to her mom, like from growing apart, then back together, her Korean identity and forging her own path in the wake of devastating loss. Um, she tells of growing up Asian American, straining to meet her mother's expectations, moving across the country, re returning home to reckon with grief. Things that it's saying it's going to explore, I just, I did not feel like enough time was spent on them. Like I really felt like there was a lot, a lot, a lot of talk about food. And when it did focus on her emotions, I just really struggled to see at the end, like how she came out from that, whatever the outcome good bad ugly like this is hard stuff to talk about right so i just wish i had seen more honestly i'm rating based off did i feel like she set out to do what she meant to do obviously the contents in here are personal like everyone goes through their own personal things you can't necessarily rate somebody's experience i'm rating did she set out what she what she wanted to do and I, it fell a little flat for me unfortunately so let me know if you guys rate memoirs i'm curious to know what you guys think and I've seen some people say I don't rate memoirs and then I've seen some people rate memoirs so I, I personally think it's okay so so let me know what you guys think I'm curious next two books I read were The Woman and Me by Britney Spears five stars that's ten five stars you guys that was such an amazing audiobook that memoir really catered to a lot of interests that I have I'm really interested in like celebrity culture, the things celebrities have gone through behind the scenes that we don't know about, like their rise to fame, what they go through while they're famous, the things that they have to put up with. Honestly, like a guilty pleasure of mine is a little bit of like celebrity gossip here and there. Like I like, I love watching Sloan and I love watching like It's Keisha, like guilty pleasures. I, I'm very interested in celebrity culture. I just find it fascinating. I'm interested in film and TV and music. And then of course, like the behind the scenes of that. So like, that's why it was just so easy for me to be like five stars. It was just, it was just so easy because it was so interesting but the narrator was also incredible Brittany only narrated like the first chapter because she said it was just a lot for her to do so she had somebody else narrate it and i don't remember the narrator's name but i just genuinely felt like the narrator's voice read like britney's voice like if you heard interviews from britney spears when she was younger or even before her conservatorship she really captured britney's like sweet innocent voice i thought that was super cool that a narrator was able to do that the book basically chronicles britney spears's journey to stardom and then it says the publicized challenges she faced her endeavors to break free from a long-standing conservatorship that once controlled her life so talks about other celebrities in there like she talks about her experience with justin timberlake she talks about growing up and like auditioning for the same things that christina aguilera was like also auditioning for and uh, did she mention Ryan Gosling or am I just making that up? It's about her sister. Like, it's just really interesting. There's so many different people that play a part into her story that I'll say allegedly, because I don't know. I don't know the truth. I don't know these people, but allegedly took advantage of her. And it's just really heartbreaking. But it was also a really good story because she obviously did get out of her conservatorship. So just really interesting all around to see how that happened and where she's at now. It just blew me away and I devoured it. It was so bingeable. I could not stop listening to it. It was short chapters. It was just really interesting, especially if you are interested in that kind of subject or you have a really fond, like if you have a lot of nostalgia for like the 2000s or just Britney Spears in general or like artists of the 2000s, like 2000s pop, hip hop, like you're, you're like learning about the behind the scenes of that culture and that time. The other memoir, I was just on a memoir kick. I don't usually get on memoir kicks, but because I love The Woman in Me, I was like, you know what? Let's go ahead and listen to I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCready. Also, because it was available on my Spotify premium, which was crazy because I really learned to enjoy audiobooks more this month. And I gave that a 4.5. It was, it was super close to a 5, but for some reason it didn't have that like 5 star feeling, but it was also just so amazing again i was a big nickelodeon gal so just hearing about what jeanette had been going through while i was watching her and enjoying iCarly and just enjoying nickelodeon and living my life as a kid she was not living her life as a kid like she was going through so much abuse from her mom and just difficult situations regarding like the creator of the iCarly show she refers to him as the the creator very interesting because it caters to my interest as far as behind the scenes of child celebrities and 
what they go through and she did an amazing job narrating it i feel like obviously her acting skills really shone through the narration i loved how it started off with her voice as she was reading in a voice of like a young girl and then obviously it matures like adulthood and narrating the story from like an adult perspective versus a kid's perspective great writing also really fast paced and just personally catered to my interest as far as like what do i look for in a memoir i'm gonna insert the clip of love light farms yeah i think i said bye in the other clip so the last book that we have for november is love light farms by bk borison which i did dnf at 50 percent and it wasn't awful. I think I would sit it at like a two stars, 2.5. It is a rom-com. It is fake dating. I liked and was drawn to the fact that it took place in the holidays. Every once in a while, I just get the urge to try a rom-com again, even though they're just not my thing. And I really feel like this is solidifying that even further. And I really felt like this just stuck true to my theory that I have about reading books that you actually like. This doesn't have all the elements of something that I would like, but I was just drawn to the fact that it was a holiday book and I wanted to read something on theme for the holidays and I thought why not something lighthearted and it still just didn't hit for me like the vibes were there but I didn't like the fact that honestly I didn't see their chemistry like it was just a bunch of sexual tension the whole time without really understanding like their friendship like obviously it alludes to these two characters friendships and how they're gonna have to fake date because the girl character which i honestly don't even remember her name because i'm like girl you weren't that memorable she wasn't that memorable of a character stella stella was super naive the whole time I was like i don't think luca likes me it's so obvious it's so obvious in the book that they have like tension but she's sitting there like i don't think he likes me and it's just so annoying to read about like i'm like girl stop there's a lot of cringe moments too that made me just be like book ick book ick random sexual tension that i feel like didn't make sense and then her being like, I don't think he likes me. It was just a lot of cringe to me. She is trying to save her Christmas tree farm that's going through a, like a rough patch with their finances. So in doing that, she signs up to win a contest from an Instagram influencer to come feature her Christmas farm, but she lied on it because the Instagram influencer loves romance. So she's like, hey, I run this Christmas tree farm with my boyfriend. So anyway, she wins this competition and she's like, I need a boyfriend. And so she's like, why not my best friend? But at the same time, it took her a long time to get there. Like she was like not wanting it to be him and was trying to think of other guys in their town that could maybe help her out. But it was so obvious that just ask your guy best friend, like it's not that deep. But she was making it so deep because she's like, I like him and he can't know and I can't ruin this. Even just asking him wouldn't necessarily mean that you liked him. Like if you had a guy best friend, and you needed a favor that doesn't need i don't know it was wholesome but i just got to the 50 percent mark and it was just like i still wasn't understanding their relationship like i still wasn't understanding why they were such good friends it was just like sexual tension to al allude to the fact that they were gonna end up together and end up in love and, and to me i just don't vibe with that it's needed in the story fine i'm not gonna sit there and be like no sexual tension ever like, if you're not setting me up to understand why these people like each other stop i don't need to read about their sexual tension i just i don't care i don't care and it's boring and it's cringe so sorry oh my god i like <laughs> destroyed this book i am so sorry i don't care i'm so sorry but i, I don't care I, I know that this was her debut novel she has a series for, the, for like the other characters in this book, which I was already introduced to, which I feel like is really wholesome. There's a moment where I was like, oh, that could be cute to read if I liked this. Maybe I could read about the other characters. But then I was like, I'm not going to waste my time. I was waiting for the Instagram influencer to get to the farm because I was interested in that part. I was like, oh my God, influencers. Like, I want to read about that. Like, how would they write about that? How would they talk about, I guess, that part of the story? But I never, I we hadn't got there. We were 50% 50, 50 of the way through. And the whole time she's just like, I don't know if Luca likes me and I don't want to ask him to be my fake boyfriend, but then there's sexual tension and that's it. That's literally been the story. Destroyed that book. My bad. I am excited for December because I just feel like I'm on a roll now. I feel like I know what I like. I feel like I'm better at putting books down when I'm not feeling them. It feels powerful. I know my next video is going to be my 
December TBR. I'm going to talk about the books that I'm going to read in December, and then I'm going to talk about the books that I'm unhauling from my bookshelf. And we're going to take them to the used bookstore together. So keep an eye out for that. Hopefully you guys like this video. Hopefully maybe inspired you to read something that you maybe were on the fence about, or maybe it gave you an idea of what to read this upcoming month. I hope you liked it. Go check out my video about how to find books that you actually like to read because I feel like it's so helpful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in a few days for the December TBR. Bye!